you want to see what a government-run health care system looks like, you need not look any further than countries like Canada or Great Britain. They already have in place so-called universal health care, and the results, well, they're not pretty. And joining us now is European Member of Parliament in studio for the first time. Now, we usually have you, you know, uh, from, from Britain. At, well, what time is it when, when you're doing this? Three in the morning. <laughs> it's about three in the morning. Honestly, thank you so much for being here. You know, you really have um, become quite a phenomenon among the conservative movement in this country uh, because you, you constantly frame the debate as America. You are our friend. You are our brother. You are our ally. And please don't go down this wrong road on health care. You feel that passionately about it. Why? Well, because I'm a friend of this country and I wish it well, and because, as you say, we're an important ally and what's bad for America is bad for Britain and bad for the free world. And, you know, at a time when the American state is expanding so much because of the stimulus and the bailouts and the nationalizations, the idea that in the middle of all that you can also afford this massive state takeover of health care, you know, that has got to be bad news for, obviously, for U.S. citizens, but also for the world economy more generally. You know, it, it, look, you said to me the last time that I had a chance to talk to you that the United States was about 10 years behind Great Britain in terms of, of, of nationalizing things. If we were to project 10 years down the road, where is America going to be if, in fact, all these things are implemented? Bankrupt and dishonored and now. impoverished and with your credit gone. I mean, th where we are now, uh, in fact, you know, we're, we're maybe a couple of years behind Zimbabwe, you know, <laughs> a few oh, years ahead gosh. of you. Um, I mean, it's, it, it, we have the, the healthcare system that we have as a kind of relic of an era in Britain when the state was considered all powerful and benign and when we had rationing and when we had ID cards and when we had mass nationalization and we're still stuck with it because you know once you once you get you a system like that it. it's almost impossible to get rid of but yeah. how amazing to me that a free people you know uh, in citizens of a country founded on the principle of independence independence for the citizen as well as independence for the state should be contemplating in peacetime burdening yeah. themselves with a system like this which puts the power of life and death in a state bureaucracy. It's, and one of the reasons I wanted to have you back, I, for example, I have here, last time you were on, it had been decided a week before that you have a government rationing body, your National Health Service is what it's called, and I read the British papers all the time, and they had just determined that they were not going to provide life-saving medication to women with advanced breast cancer. And I asked you, was that a death sentence? And your answer was... Uh, yeah, I mean, of course. And, and if, if you then try and purchase your own treatment outside the National Health Service, they will cut off your the treatment service. that you were getting from the NHS because they have this bias against the private sector. Now, to be fair, some of that, there was such an outcry about that that some of that has now been, been modified, but you get a, a pretty good picture of the right. mentality there. Because it's not uncommon because we have people from Canada come to America because of long waits and inferior care. We have people from Great Britain coming here for, for elective surgery and emergency surgery and the, and the same thing with France. I mean, the thing that, that I, uh, you may find hard to believe is that you go along and you say, I need a hip replacement or I, uh, you know, I need uh, treatment for prostate cancer and they will say thank you the queue is over there we'll see you in October of next year or whatever it is I mean it's an unbelievable yeah. thing so people are then left in pain in positions where they can't work where they're losing income uh, at the back of a queue waiting for permission to get treatment and it's there is nothing you can do about it. Do you think the American people have lost maybe um, a certain part of their uniqueness and understanding of what it means to be free? No, I don't think, I don't think the people of this country have. I really don't. I mean, why are they supporting it? Well, you see, I wonder whether they really do. I, I, I'm an elected legislator as well, mm -hmm. and no politician can ever afford to forget what his constituents think about things. But I, I'm actually quite optimistic. I mean, this, yeah. you know, this is a country founded in the principle of small government, big individual, you know, constrained power, uh, and, uh, and free citizens. And, you know, this, uh, the idea that this of all countries could put into the power of a state bureaucracy decisions over what kind of medical treatment you get, literally whether you can live or die, is deeply un-American. I would agree with you, but there is a large segment of the population uh, for whatever reason, they have almost mentally been conditioned mm. to think that the government is the answer to all their problems. They promise them Social Security. Social Security in America is bankrupt. Medicare in, in America is bankrupt. Uh, the stimulus, once it passed, promised that unemployment wouldn't go above 8%. It's now headed to double digits. There are people that put their faith in government. 
which I think is the antithesis okay. of the very founding principles well, you I, mentioned. I'm not sure that they're going to be the. Of course, there are people, who, and there are people of goodwill who think that. We should we yeah. should be honest about this, Sean. The, the people who think that are not wicked, right? They're just they 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 they've, they've from sincere well, motives reached history, a different position from ours. Okay, because you've but tried it, we, France has right. tried it, and you know what? And all of the countries of Eastern Europe tried it. Yeah. I mean, if you've gone back to the 1980s, the British healthcare model was not as unique as it now is because it was shared by Czechoslovakia and East Germany and Poland, and all of those countries have now dismantled it because That's part true. of the democratization process was to get rid of the NHS type system and replace it with something closer uh, to what to exists here or, or, or in other parts of Western Europe. So the idea that you are going to now go down this road it's towards a Cuban or North Korean system is just extraordinary. Well, it's extraordinary and it's almost baffling to me. I mean, the fact that we are, the audience out there is doing their job. They're going to those town hall meetings of those politicians. They're confronting them. They're embarrassing them. But even with that happening, Democrats are just, you know, blinders on. They still want to ram it down our throat. There is a real commitment to get this done on the Democratic side, the liberal side in this country. I don't know if that's going to be the case. I mean, you know, I, I've, met some, I, I've met some good, sincere, patriotic Americans in mm -hmm. both parties. Yeah. And this is a democracy and people have to, you know, we, you have a really good open accountable system of government with open yeah. source politics, with open primaries. Well, I'm watching at a distance and I see your political star has, has been rising quite a bit. Um, do you ever perhaps think of a day where you could be the head of a uh, uh, party that could come to power and one day I'd introduce you on this program as uh, Prime Minister of England? <laughs> I can exclusively tell you, I don't think that's going to happen. I'll tell you what, yeah. you know the last time that a bald party leader defeated a hirsute party leader in the US mm -hmm. was when Garfield won in 1880, right? Okay. The last time it happened in England was in, in 1831. So I mean, so ruled out on those grounds already. Daniel Hannon, great to see you Very on this nice side of the you. pond. Thanks for being Thanks, with us. Sean. And that is all the time we have left this evening. As always, thank you for being with us.